By the way, some other names for these um, have to do with spin. Uh, remember that these represent positive one-half and negative one-half spins. Mm -hmm. So what would be the overall spin for this compound? Negative. What would be the overall spin here? Positive what? Upspin? Yeah, oh. positive what? One-half. Posi one positive one-half. These two spins will cancel. Okay. And these two spins will cancel. And the only thing that doesn't cancel is this positive one-half. Oh, okay. Although, again, it's really arbitrary that I drew this up. I could just as well have drawn it down and said negative one-half. Okay. But the key thing is that this will have a one-half spin. Okay, but, I mean, if, like, um, the, the, if I'll use, say, negative one-half, is it... Um, that, that's just arbitrary um, because you could just as um, I've been drawing things where first I put in po uh, positive and then I put in negative. That's really after all whether something is spinning up or down kind of depends on what angle you're looking at it from. Anyway, so there's not too much uh, and, and even and even that and also spin is really just an analogy for this for this property. Okay. So the key thing is let's not focus too much on the positive or negative. The key thing is that the, the magnitude here is one half. Now, what would be the total spin if we were in the weak field case? If we were in this weak field case, what would the spin have been? All positive. So the total spin would have been? Positive. Positive what? Um, one, two, two and a half. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Or positive five halves, because each of these has a one half spin, and there's one, two, three, four, five of them. So we could say this is positive five halves, or that's two and a half. That's right. Although, again, the key thing is not that it's positive, because I could just as well have drawn these all as negative spins. So it could also have been negative 5 halves, but the key thing is that the magnitude is 5 halves. So which of these would be well called the high spin case, and which would be well termed the low spin case? That one the weak one? This is the high spin, because you see we got a high spin. And here we got low spin. We just call the whole like, thing. Is a little another bit. name for weak field is high spin. And another name for strong field is low spin. Because if you think about it, there will always be, um, uh, there's always likely to be a higher spin here than here. Because in the strong field case, the electrons pair up more easily. Right, in the yeah. strong field case, the electrons pair up more easily. So they tend to cancel each other out. Whereas in the weak field case, we postpone as long as possible pairing up the electrons. So if you work through a couple of examples, you can convince yourself that the weak field always tends to be a higher spin than the strong field, or at least it's going to be at least as big or bigger of a spin. So um, it turns out then that high spin is a synonym for weak field, and strong field is a synonym for low spin. So those are terms that you might see used. That's why I was saying we don't really care. I wasn't trying. That's why I wasn't focusing on the plus or the minus here. The important thing was to see yeah. that this is high in magnitude spin and this is a low in magnitude spin. Okay, um, so uh, that would give us uh, this. Now, let's try. So if we change the number of valence electrons on the iron, yeah. when it was like in the cation, would yeah. the whole problem be different? Right. Because we have uh, different uh, valence electrons then. If yes. our valence electrons will change and then we need to work with that, that's a good point. I should have pointed that out. So I should have pointed out that when you're doing these problems, the first step is to count the valence electrons. Yeah. You can't solve these problems without counting the valence electrons. That's why we spent quite a bit of time on that last time as well. And how do you count the valence electrons? First, you figure out how many valence electrons there would be on the neutral atom. Right. And then you can figure out from that how many are left in the cation. So what I've written down on the board here is the model for what you should write down when you're solving these problems. Write right. down this, this, and then you're ready to write this down. Right, okay. We'll do a couple more examples so it'll be clear how that applies. Find the yeah, yeah. first we find the number, we want to know the valence electrons of the cations, but the way to do that is first to find the valence electrons on the neutral atom, and then we just subtract how many that have been removed. Well, that means there was another step I should have emphasized here. One of the other things we had to do, maybe the first thing we had to do, was figure out the oxidation number on this iron. Because if we didn't know this was iron 3+, plus, we wouldn't know that we were taking away 3 electrons. This could have been said iron 2+. Plus. 
Um, that was, again, one of the reasons why we spent a lot of time last time practicing how to find oxidation numbers. You need to be able to find the oxidation number to apply crystal field right. theory. So even if like the charge on the whole complex ion was changed, then that in itself would change the valence electrons on the ion, right? right? Yeah. The valence electrons on the cation, that's yeah. right, that's right. So really the first step here is find the oxidation number on the transition metal, and um, you, you, you'd already done that at the start automatically, so that was good. Getting this number was crucial to finding how many valence electrons were left. Because it wasn't given in the, in the problem, right? The, um, the problem didn't say this was iron three plus, we had to figure it out. So find the oxidation numbers and we'll find neutral um, atom valence atom electrons. electrons of neutral atoms and we'll find the cation of the yes. white metal and then we'll draw both cases of strong and weak and then we'll give a look at glue right. and compare and Good. then we'll tell the spins. Yes. Good. Okay. Now, uh, good? So let's try another example. All right.